Hi everybody, my name is Molly Keck. I am an entomologist here at the Bear County um, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service and I appreciate you guys listening to this video. Um, I'm going to cover really briefly a little bit about what the 4-H entomology team is in case that's something that you're interested in joining this year or um, coming back to. So the 4-H entomology team is basically a good group of kids that like to get together to learn about insects. And so I started this team several years ago as a way to supplement and um, provide other opportunities re in regards to entomology for the kids that uh, specifically attended my camps in the summers. But you can come to this entomology team regardless of whether you've attended the camps or not. So if you're not familiar with what 4-H is, it's um, the oldest youth development organization older than Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. It's a club meant for kids in third through twelfth grade. There is a thing called um, clovers which are for first and second graders I believe um, and those kids are welcome to come to our practices. There's just not a contest uh, opportunity for them in, in regards to entomology. So 4-H is nationwide. Every county, every parish in the country has a 4-H program and it encompasses a lot of different program areas or topics and in Bear County we have the largest 4-H program in the state and so we have a lot of other programs and projects if you guys are interested in doing other things beyond just entomology. So when you join 4-H um, think of it in terms of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts or at least that's how I like to think about it. You have your traditional club that you you join and so it, when you join 4-H you usually will call the office and they'll tell you what is your closest club to where you live and those usually have monthly meetings um, they might offer other activities like community service other um, projects that maybe those kids are interested in different get-togethers if you don't want to be part of a traditional club you can join the spin club which is our entomology team and all we do is just practice entomology. You can be part of a traditional club and still do the entomology club or this entomology, um, be a part of our, our, our spin team, um, or you can just do the spin team. It's, it's really up to you what you've got the time to, to do. So the basic rules for joining 4-H is you have to be in third to 12th grade. And when the contest comes along, you have to be passing all of your tests, your, your classes in order to compete. <clears throat> because the contest is held during the school year, they require that. When we get to the state contest in the summertime for the little bit older kids, because it's outside of the school period, you don't have to actually be eligible. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand it, but that's the rules that 4-H, um, the state 4-H has put together. So our entomology team basically gets together and we study all the insects that we have to know for the contest. Our overall goal is to go to the entomology contest, um, take the t contest, and hopefully score really high and our teams get ribbons and plaques and things like that. Um, we have to know different things about different orders. We have to know order names, the common name, what type of mouth parts they have, what their life cycle is. We also need to know like where they live and anything that's important about them. Are they a pest? Are they a good bug? Are they just kind of there? What makes them a pest? <coughs> so just general information about them. Um, I coach the, the kids, but I'm always welcome and open to anybody else who wants to be involved. I think that if we have more parents that do want to help coach, we can probably offer more practices, but more than that, we can do things beyond practices, like we can do field trips, or you know, let's say that the San Antonio Botanical Gardens has an insect display throughout the gardens. I may not have time to set up a time for everyone to go out and just get together to enjoy that, but maybe there could be another parent that does have the time to organize that, um, and I can always share the emails, or I don't mind even sending the emails out to everybody. So. Um, I am more than willing to let other people take the, some of the make the make the con, make the the team fun. I guess is what I should say. So when we meet to study for the contest, um, this is an example of the information that the kids need to know about silverfish. So they have to know that the order name is Thysanura. They have to know it's a pest. It has chewing mouth parts. Its life cycle is incomplete, or we also call it a metabolis. 
So it's kind of, um, uh, it, it's not easy information, but you'd be actually very surprised at how quickly the kids catch on um, and how much they learn. And let's say that you have a third grader and you're thinking, gosh, that's really hard information to know. Well, the number of insects they have to know is based on their age. So juniors don't really need to know a ton of insects. I think it's something in the 20s, 20 different insects they have to know. Intermediates have to know a few more. And then, of course, seniors have to know everything that's on our big list. Um, so it, it's, it's, uh, it's tiered. If you're a junior, you are in grades 3 to 5, so you're in elementary school. Intermediates are our middle schoolers, and seniors are our um, high schoolers. So as you age up, you know have to know a few more um, insects. Um, so again, like I mentioned, the end goal of the entomology team is to compete in the district entomology contest. We love to have teams that go to the contest. Everyone that goes competes as an individual. But if we have three or four kids from Bear County, that go in their respective age group, they can they constitute a team. And you ha now have two chances to win or to place, right? So it's better to go as a team because you double your chances of winning something. And we usually kick butt at the entomology district contest. We usually do excellent. Combined, our kids do so much better than individually, which makes perfect sense because um, the kids learn so much. And while they may be placing like first and fourth and sixth, Cumulatively, they're placing higher than any other county is. Um, and I should mention that these that that these practices are not just for Bear County kids. If you're in Kendall County or anywhere else, you're more than welcome to join us for practices. I um, am in Bear County, um, and so most of the kids obviously are from Bear County. But if you're from any other county in the district or in the state, you're more than welcome to attend our practices. There's nothing that's secret to just Bear County. Um, so teams are made up of three to four individuals of their same age group. It's better to have a team of four because if you have a team of four, the, they only take the top three scores. And we never know who had the lowest score. But that allows us, if we have a team of four, someone's really sick that day and they don't make it, we still have a team. Or somebody shows up and they just, they just lost their mind and they forgot everything that they had learned and they don't score very well, it doesn't matter. They're still, they're still part of a group that hopefully can rise them up and they can still um, earn a placing and get recognized for having studied all this stuff all along. Um, the contest is basically half a written exam and half an identification exam. So the kids will look at pictures of insects and have to identify the common name and the order. And then they'll get, be given a written portion where they have to it's usually multiple choice. If it's short answer, it's a very, very short answer. Um, and the contest doesn't take them long to take, but it takes us a long time to usually grade it. So it's, you know, it's like a, it's like a little test. So if, you, if your kids hate to take tests, this probably isn't the competition that they would enjoy. The requirements to be on the Bear County Entomology team, um, my requirements are that you participate in as many practices as you can. I get it that you've got other things going on. My family does as well, so I understand that you can't make every single one, but try to as attend as much as you can because if you are part of a team and you're not attending practices, then you're you're not helping your team out. So we want if it's a team, we want everyone to work together. Um, if you are going to attend the practices, I do ask that you commit to coming to the contest. In the past, we've had a lot of kids that come to practice but don't actually sign up for the contest. And that makes it really difficult for me to figure out how we should group the teams together. It makes it harder to run a practice because we have twice the number of kids and I'm doing a lot more um, uh, redirecting behavior and attentions than really getting into the nitty gritty of, of understanding what the, what the material is. So if, you're gonna, if you think you're gonna come to practices, I know that you might wanna come to one or two before you decide. If you continue to come, commit to, to attending that contest. Um, December 4th, again, is the contest. It's going to be held in Kerrville. The contest is on a Wednesday morning, so remember that. If you don't think you can get out of school or you don't want to get out of school for the day, you know, consider doing something else um, because the contest is going to be held on December 4th, which is a Wednesday in Kerrville. I believe it's a morning contest. I thinking that they're probably going to start the contest at 9 o'clock and have registration or sign up at 8.30. So
So you want to get there at 8.30 because as soon as everyone arrives, they're going to get started. And once 9 o'clock hits, if you haven't showed up yet and you show up at 9.05, you're going to miss th the contest. So try to get there early. Um, the, it should be an excused absence from school because it is a UIL sanctioned event. Um, so I, when you when you have your little paperwork that tells you uh, that you have to get your principal to sign that says that you're passing all your classes, make a copy of that because that should be used as an excused absence. Some schools, um, primarily the private schools or charter schools, don't recognize that. Um, I don't know what to do to make them recognize it, but but generally, um, if you talk to your your principal about it, they'll they'll excuse the absence, which is which is good. Now, after the district contest, we usually take a break over the Christmas break and we get back together, at least intermediates and seniors get back together around February, and we start to get ready for the state contest. State contest is the same material, the same information that we have to know, but it's a little bit harder. The, the questions are a little bit harder, a little bit more detailed, um, and this contest is open to anyone who's an intermediate or a senior and it doesn't matter how you placed at the district contest. Or if you got sick and you accidentally missed the district contest, you can still participate in the state contest. This one is held in the summer. It's held in College Station and it's actually at the entomology department. Um, you get to do a, a tour of the entomology department. It's kind of fun if you think that your child is going to participate, might take some entomology classes or major in entomology, you kind of get a taste of what that's about. Um, and that one this year is going to be held June 10th, 2020, not 2019, 2020. Um, intermediates and seniors are the only ones eligible. Juniors cannot participate in this one, so you have to be in 6th through 12th grade. Um, and we will continue to practice just with intermediates and seniors to get ready for that contest. And, and it's usually pretty fun to, to go to that one. So I have some tentative meeting dates. I'm still waiting for my kids volleyball and soccer and um, every other sport softball schedules to come out and once I have that then I'll be able to really say yes we're gonna meet on these days and these times but for right now what I'm looking at are um, a handful of dates trying to meet twice a month one in person and one as a webinar so that's easier stay in your pajamas you don't have to get in the car in person we usually hold it at we always hold it at the extension office and that one is 1.30 to 2.30 generally. Well, we, I might adjust the dates depending on what I've got going on that day. Um, so, you, you know, write it, pencil it down, don't pin it down. And I should know, um, I should have a better idea in the next couple of weeks um, when we'll for sure meet. We're definitely going to meet September 8th in person so I can um, hand out the material um, and, you know, share all the information with everybody. Uh, so, so hold those dates if you're interested in joining us. And really quickly, if you're not interested in the entomology ID contest, if it doesn't sound like fun to take a test, um, there's another option for your kids, and that's the entomology collection contest. The collection contest is open to everybody, um, and basically what you do is, if you're not in Bear County, you make arrangements with your agent to get your contest up to College Station when they have the state roundup competition. So we judge them in College Station. I get the uh, graduate students from the entomology department to help me judge, and they do most of the judging. And I have June 10th down, but actually the date is going to be, yes, it's gonna be June 10th of 2020 is when you've gotta get it there. So you've got, if you're in, no, I'm sorry, it's June 9th. That means then that the state competition is June 10th, not the 11th, like I, I misspoke earlier. Um, you got to get the contest to me sometime the week before so I can get it up to College Station. And if you visit the YouTube channel, Bear Entomology, you'll get a lot of information on how to do some proper pinning and things. But basically, based on your age, you're required to collect a certain number of insects. They have to be in so many different orders. If you collect 15 insects and you're a junior, you have to have eight different orders, so you can't submit all grasshoppers. And of those 15 insects, 10 of them have to be have the common names that we study in the entomology 4-H guidelines. And we can talk more about that if you're interested in it. Since it's not until the summer, we usually don't start, I usually don't start telling people about it until April or May when it warms up and you're able to go out collecting some more. 
So um, how to become a 4-H member, there are some dues. It's $20 until October 31st, I think, and then it bumps up to $25. And if you're interested in joining, I don't know much about how to get joined. I just run the team. So you definitely want to contact our 4-H agent, Natalie Cervantes, at 630-0400. So that's our office number. And there are tons of other things within 4-H that you can get involved with, different projects, different clubs that do different things, um, anything from rifle shooting to archery to equine to debate to um, cooking to photography, anything that you can think of, we probably have a project for that in 4-H. So um, if, if it's interesting to you, definitely give Natalie a call and see if your kids might find a place and a role in 4-H. Um, I hope I see you guys on September the 8th about at 1.30. Um, and uh, I hope I see a bunch of you guys back this year that were on the entomology team last year. Thank you.